I managed to get my hands on the new BMW R90 Scrambler, so I thought I'd give you a quick look around and give you my initial impressions on the bike. It's the same base model as the Roadster, although this bike comes with a different set of wheels and tyres. It's got the higher level Akropovich Scrambler exhaust. Gone are the Olin's upside down forks to be replaced by a standard set of forks, uh, but you still get the twin Brembo brakes. One change from the standard R90 Roadster is the drop down to a single small clock. Uh, starting sequence is exactly the same, no need to pull the clutch in. Let's have a quick listen to it starting up. Burble from the exhaust, and it does have that scrambler wrap. Talking of the small speedo, you can see here that uh, it has a couple of functions for trips as well as the engine temp and the clock, but that's about it. There's no fuel gauge, there's no gear indicator, it is purely just a neutral uh, light on there. It does come with heated grips. And on the display, you can see there's a couple of settings for hot and not quite so hot. Um, but that's it. Other than that, you're back to basics with this bike. So what's it like to ride? Well, uh, if you've seen any of my previous bike reviews, you'll recognize some of these roads. I took it out for a quick spin around some of the local routes. Uh, first impressions were pretty good. Uh, the bike is uh, a bit taller than the Roadster with the seat height at 820 millimeters as opposed to 785 on the original. The bike I was riding came fitted with a pair of the Metzler Carew 3 tires uh, which took a little bit of getting used to. It's quite an aggressive knobble on those tires and um, uh, the first few corners felt a bit weird but you soon kind of work into that and then once you get onto the smaller country roads that uh, that you see here uh, those tires came into themselves with excellent grip uh, particularly on some of the gravelly sections performance wise it's the same as the r90 roadster it is the same engine and the same transmission the exhaust note is different though that high level exhaust uh, does gives more of a, a scrambler sound it's got a nice brap and if you need to uh, bark at some inattentive drivers uh, you do get a nice noise from it the brakes are very good on the bike the twin discs up front with the brembo calipers will haul the bike to a stop very quickly with no fuss at all and then when you're riding around the country lanes of essex certainly at this time of year as you can see sometimes you do need those brakes because you get massive great big tractors coming around the corner the initial bite on the brake is good, as it is the feel and the modulation. Uh, the rear brake is pretty handy as well, although I did notice that there's quite a big movement on the lever before it engages, although that's easy to get used to, obviously. Now, this is no Paris Dakar, but I did manage to take the bike down a couple of dirt tracks and it performed well. The suspension is firm, uh, uh, but I didn't play around with any of the adjustments on that. And the Metzler Carew 3 tyres uh, were very good on this kind of terrain. That brown seat is particularly nice. I thought it was leather, but on closer inspection, I think it, it is actually a vinyl. The brushed aluminium tank with the knee pads is a very nice finish. Outside of that, the engine compartment uh, can be a little bit messy and over fussy. One thing I do like is the treatment of those wheels. The way they're spoked with the rim poking out the side, I think uh, looks particularly nice. And those tyres inspired me just to be a touch of a hooligan on the loose stuff. So what's my final verdict? Well, I found myself liking the bike, but not loving the bike. Um, I've ridden the Roadster, the R90 Roadster, and I really like that. Maybe I just needed more time on the bike, but the larger front wheel made the steering a little bit slower than the Roadster. And on slow corners, the bike had a tendency to feel as if it wanted to fall into the corner. 
this bike feels like a little bit of a compromise maybe it's got a little bit of an identity crisis as an out and out scrambler maybe it's just a little bit too heavy with that big boxer engine carrying its weight uh, relatively high it's got plenty of power so if you want to treat it like a hooligan bike you can do i just think uh, given its weight and cost there are cheaper lighter more nimble bikes out there if you want that style of riding the quality of fit and finish is exactly what you would expect from bmw everything does what it should do very nicely and i'm sure bmw are going to sell a lot of these r90 scramblers as i mentioned only got a short amount of time on the bike so perhaps with a little bit more time in the saddle i'll appreciate it a little bit more don't get me wrong it's a fantastic bike the build quality is good uh, the brakes work really well it's a quick bike uh, you can get yourself into trouble with this uh, you can roar and hoon around like a hooligan if you really want to if i was going to spend my own hard-earned money on r90 scrambler i think i'd prefer to look for a low mileage used r90 roadster and make a few modifications to make it my own there's a whole package i felt it left me wanting maybe a little bit more perhaps i've just been spoilt by the first impressions of the standard r90 as ever i'm always happy to read your views or questions so if you've got anything drop it in the comments box below uh, but until next time thanks for watching take care ride safe and i'll see you soon bye